bring in New Jersey Congressman Jeff Van Drew. He is a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman, good morning. Good morning. So what do you make of all of this? I mean, obviously, there was, I guess, some, well, I didn't have a lot of hope, but there was some hope that Mayorkas and Blinken's meeting with the president of Mexico earlier this week was going to affect some change, maybe some, some policy directives. It doesn't seem like that happened. Cheryl, you're a positive person, and you do have hope, and many Americans are. I had no hope, because I know, let's really get down to the brass tacks. This administration likes illegal activity in the form of immigration. They support it. They're leaving the borders open on purpose. This is not an accident. They want to change the substance and structure of the United States of America. And what happened in Mexico, that meeting, and the supposed task force that they're going to produce is a joke. It's going to do nothing. We know what to do. Finish the wall. Stop catch and release. Get more Border Patrol agents and let them do their job new technology, immediately expedite back to the country of origin, and most of all, the stay in Mexico policy. We also had had Title 42. This is fixable. If you get President Trump back in, or you, you know, we're going to be able to get those borders buttoned up quicker than anybody could want to imagine. But again, this is a desire to change the United States of America as we know it. It is nothing less than that. But Congressman, you would think that the Biden administration would be aware, and I believe there's been some reporting that they are, that immigration does matter to voters. And we are coming up on an election year, 2024. This is a presidential election and several other seats are going to be up, Senate, House, etc. So you would think that the Biden administration would start to try to take meaningful uh, steps um, aside from what we saw this week, I mean, the political risk is there. Are you hearing anything about that that type of chatter uh, in Washington, or at least, uh, you know, I know your home, but your colleagues, the Democratic colleagues, aren't they aware that immigration could really hurt the Democrats in 2024? Some colleagues are, and there are still, you know, and remember five years ago, I was a Democrat, so I know the makeup of that group, but it's changing radically. These aren't the Democrats that we used to know, and there are a few people speaking out like Henry Cuellar and others, but the bottom line is the Biden administration is in a real catch-22. Their desire, their fever and desire to change this country forever, and I'm not exaggerating, this is real. Is, is so strong that they're willing to actually take a risk politically in order to do so. Cheryl, we must understand the president has the ability today, right now, this morning, he could do executive orders. He could stop this. We could button up these borders. We could move forward. We passed H.R. 2, which is a comprehensive bill that deals with all the things that I just mentioned, tightening up the border and buttoning it up through the wall, stopping catch and release, making sure that we send people back to their country of origin if they do get through, uh, making sure that we you know, have a border that's real. See, they don't want to do that because they know that in a few more months they will have allowed as many illegal immigrants to come into this country as the population of the state of New Jersey. It's going, it's like the 51st state, but I want people to know who are watching and listening out there, this doesn't only affect Texas, and Governor Abbott's doing a great job. I wish our governor would do something like that, but it affects the entire country because you, the taxpayer, are paying to fly them out, to transport them, to give them what they need, to give them housing, uh, to locate them wherever they want to be in the country. Yeah. This is sick. It's wrong. All right. I, I do want to switch gears before we let you go, uh, Congressman, to, to get your, your comments on this breaking news that we've been covering since uh, the top of the hour. So this is Maine. The Secretary of State, Shanna Bellows, has removed former President Trump from the state's 2024 primary ballot. She claiming even though he was never actually convicted of insurrection, uh, according to state law, she can still remove him for it. Political move, you, you tell me, but I want you to watch her defending her decision last night on another network. No Secretary of State has ever deprived a presidential candidate of ballot access based on Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, but no presidential candidate has ever engaged in insurrection. Congressman, the former president was never convicted of insurrection. He was never convicted, he was never charged, that the 14th Amendment, that part of it was not meant for anything like this. It was meant, obviously, 
It was done during the Civil War, after the Civil War, to make sure that people that were guilty of trying to change this country and the union that we have. Um, but, you know, it, it's not just silly. It's not just stupid. It's not just political. Again, it's the rule of law. And, Cheryl, what I'm speaking about is on so many fronts, whether it's in education, whether it's in government, whether it's in woke corporations, or whether it's here, it is a desire to change America forever. What is this reminiscent of? This is reminiscent of what's happening in Russia right now when Putin has made sure that any of his challengers are removed from the ballot. This is what third world countries do. It's what totalitarian countries do. It's what dictatorships do. It never should be what America is do, ever does. We are on the precipice. This is a very important year coming up in order to save the republic, and I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, his lawyers say that this is a, a threat against our democracy. Um, we shall see what the Supreme Court has to say about all of this. Congressman Jeff Andrew, it's always, we, we're grateful for you joining us uh, all the time, and, and Happy New Year to you. Please compliment your wife on the, uh, the decorations behind you. It looks fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. All right. Happy New Year. <laughs> Take care. All right, well, we've got a lot more coming up this morning. Futures extending the year-end rally. It is the final trading day of 2023. We are